Welcome to Step 5, Preparing Care for the Soil Properly and the 10 Basic Steps to a Successful Vegetable Garden. To maintain and improve soil conditions, mix organic matter and fertilizers into the soil before planting. So that's all I do. I just kind of start chipping away at it and then you can smooth it out with a rake or your hand and then we, that's when we plant according to the directions on the seed packet, okay? After you've planted according to the directions on the seed packet, we can go get a wheelbarrow for old compost and we can just kind of take a shovel and lightly cover it with just a little layer of, of compost. Organic matter makes the soil loose and easy to work with. It improves nutrient and water holding capacity, drainage and aeration. Fertilizer is a soil amendment. We do add it to the soil. But what defines a fertilizer is that it is quantified. And when you look at a bag of fertilizer, there will be three numbers. And one will indicate the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. The rate of application will be on the bag. Follow the directions on the bag. You have to do the math. You have to figure out how many square feet you're going to be doing soil prep for and weigh and measure the fertilizer. Too much is not better. And enough helps put nutrients right at the root zone. Our soils are rich in minerals, they really are, and as we add and develop the compost part of our soil amendment program for a vegetable garden, nutrient availability improves. Fertilizers can be synthetic, they can be what they call organic. A fertilizer should be added containing both nitrogen and phosphorus and be applied before planting. The big three, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potassium are the essential elements for growing all plants and for vegetables. Nitrogen gives you good, strong, leafy growth. So for that, we incorporate the phosphorus and the potassium, which help plants bloom and help them set good, sturdy, healthy fruits. They're good for root development, so the plant can absorb nutrients and grow. If you are preparing a seed bed, do not work the soil when it is too wet. Wait for it to dry sufficiently so it crumbles in your hands. We have lots of salts in our soils. The detriment to the soil is that it impedes water absorption. pH is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a substance. Soil pH is a very important thing to consider in plant growth and development. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Anything less than 7 is considered acid and anything greater than 7 is considered alkaline. Most plants do best in a soil pH between 5.5 and 7, but here in our desert in the southwest our soil pH tends to be alkaline greater than 7 and it's really common to find a soil pH around 8 or higher. We can slightly alter the soil pH so we can add organic matter such as compost and as that or organic matter continues to decompose it releases organic acids into the soil which lowers the soil pH and improves soil structure. We can also add soil sulfur which is an organic soil amendment Salinity is a measure of the salt concentration in the soil. The more salt in the soil, the more difficult it is for plants to uptake water and those minerals dissolved in the water. It causes leaf burn and eventually as the sodium salts and other salts accumulate in the soil, it can kill the plants. So the best way to manage salts in the soil is with good irrigation practices, using good quality irrigation water and periodically irrigating very deeply so that any salts that have accumulated in the root zone are leached down below the root zone. For more information, visit the University of Arizona's Cooperative Extension website.